Hello my friends, welcome to today. We are going to pay a lot of attention to the Nautilus. There is one piece of tech that we really want to make sure that we find before we go kind of semi-permanently into the deep. So while I reload some batteries and get things ready for the search today, we are going to go to, um, well one, we need to upgrade some of our stuff that we have. So let's run over to the Nautilus and use the upgrade station to change out our knife. Uh, we're going to upgrade the knife to um, the, the heat blade, which will give us more punch when we need to take out um, any bad guys, you know. So we're upgrading the heat blade. There we go. Now we have the heat blade. It's kind of cool. And then now, since we don't need to worry about the radiation nearly as much, let's switch out our radiation suit with the, let's, it's right here, the uh, reinforced uh, dive suit, which will, <laughs> of course, make it so that if something tries to take a bite out of us, it won't hurt us nearly as bad, preventing us from getting our respawn that luckily we have been so happily avoiding thus far in the game. Still, I am only at, I, I haven't respawned in this game. So here I put to rest the radiation suit, um, hopefully for the last time. I don't think we use it for the rest of the game, so I'm just going to place it right outside the facility so we're not having to store it and waste space. Um, this place, yeah, seems like a good graveyard for it. Now, where we are going today is we are going to go explore three major wrecks that are found in uh, the the southern western corner of the map, which is where the island, uh, the floating island actually is. And I, uh, I'll put up on the screen right now the map that I have modified to have four teal symbols put onto it. Those are the four wrecks that we are going to go look for. And for some odd reason, I got lost a lot today, including attacked by some really big guys. Due to getting lost so much, I am going to cut a lot out of today. Like, there is easily 40 minutes of the hour that I recorded that I don't need to shoot. So, here we are getting to the first data box that I found near the top corner of the Grand Reef. And if you noticed, it only gave me two titanium. A lot of data boxes within the game, there are typically, well, not exactly typically, but there is often two or more of those data boxes, which means we're getting to the point of the game where we're refinding technology. So right on the screen, you can see this is where we are. We're at the kind of northeastern edge of the Grand Reef. And this wreck is, I'm, I'm going to show you the inside of it a little bit because we find a uh, couple of pieces of the prawn suit that will be useful to us later. So let's dive into this and I will show you kind of the full search on this one just to give you a feel of how long it takes to kind of go through these wrecks. So, because these wrecks are pretty large in comparison to some of the stuff we've found so far. And you can see that there are a lot of the same resource in these wrecks. And I already have the uh, prawn suit. This is, let's see, the torpedo arm. Um, uh, no, that's not the torpedo on that. That's the grappler arm. So that's the grappler arm. We already found that a couple of episodes ago. So if I was to scan everything, I would just fill up my inventory with titanium. Which is not exactly a bad thing, but with how long we'll be out. See, here we go. Let's see here. And more tech we already had. Hey, look! The mining arm. This is awesome. Okay, the mining arm it has been one that we've been desperately searching for because once we build the prawn suit, that will be one of the most valuable additions to the prawn suit. And between the other four, three or four... Um, attachments, I think that the grappler arm will be the next best thing to have on there. So we'll probably build the grappler arm and the mining arm, and which will make it so that we are capable of using the full breadth of the prawn suit. Oh, look, more tech. Do we get anything? Hey, we got 
Hey, that's... Hey, hey, this is the repair module. Ooh, well, okay. So you can see the, the value in repairing the puddle jumper every time we dock with the Nautilus. Except for, it will take power from the batteries of the Nautilus in order to do that. So there's something to be considered. Oh, yay, another door we have to cut. But check it out, I can mount the light. Oops, <laughs> I guess Stasis is right for a door. That's fine. Another fascinating strategy that we have to consider within the realm of Subnautica is the fact that we have more upgrade modules than we have slots for the various tools that we're using. So, in the case of the Nautilus, we have six upgrade slots. And we're quickly running out of options for what we want to put in there. This means that I might, after we get the uh, thermal reactor, we might not need the two um, engine efficiency uh, modules. We'll only need one of them, and we'll need the thermal reactor, which means we have three spots left to consider what we're going to do. Now that I'm back in the puddle jumper, I'm showing you a little bit about how s there are sometimes multiple entrances to these larger wrecks, and w this is where we swam out just a moment ago, but taking a moment to, to drive around it and just double check that you haven't missed anything sometimes can be very valuable for you in terms of, you know, just finding more tech or whatnot. I mean, we saw that somewhere in an elevator shaft we got the fire suppression module. So it's not a bad deal. Just trying to double check, cover my bases, and make sure I didn't leave anything behind. With that being said, we are going to head back to the uh, puddle jumper, and let's start moving on, see if we can find one of the other three wrecks that we have left to find. Um, which brings me to the, an interesting thought. I wanted to show off... Oh, there's some more... Look, you can see bits and pieces of thermal mo uh, thermal power plants. It's it's a good mixture of tech in this one. This is probably I would say this is one of the more valuable uh, wrecks that you could find. So the northeastern corner or area of the blue bulb, which is the Grand Reef uh, area. So the Grand Reef is really beautiful, and uh, just, I, I, I found it so beautiful, I just had to leave some of the Grand Reef in here. And this is without having to look for the Degazi base or anything, and I think we're actually pretty close, yet not in the right area to even see the deep Degazi base. But this is beautiful, like, I love the blue hues. And I realized, I really need to consider where I can place a uh, a habitat in in this area for future plays. Like, I'm not going to take the time to move this time, but this is just beautiful, especially with those angel-like fish gliding around. You might have your usual pest, which is that funny-looking brain crab. Uh, what is it? Uh, it it's kind of like the spider crab. What did I call it? What is it called? Huh. Anyway, I mean, I'm going back. I, just the sheer beauty of this area just in got me totally excited. I was lo loving this and traveling around in it. It, yeah, it was pretty fun. But this area does have those pesky <sighs> reapers that, not reapers, uh, not reaper leviathans. There's no reaper leviathans, but there is a ghost leviathan in this area. Um, but also we have those wraiths and the wraiths can be a little bit annoying <sighs> and they get it really on my nerves <laughs> in today's uh, search but lo and behold I accidentally got caught by the ghost leviathan and this actually way caught me off guard he did half damage to the sea to the, the to the sea moth uh, the puddle jumper in just one bite luckily I had the stasis rifle ready to go, and as soon as I located my Seamoth, I was like, okay, we gotta get out of here. Let's trap him one last time and beeline it away from here. Someone's 
it's great. Yet terrifying, because, you know, just one more bite and we would have lost our wonderful pedal jumper. But to get a little ways away from him, he loses track of us, and thank goodness he does not track us beyond that point. Oh my gosh, when that happened, oh. I'm not kidding, my heart did jump a couple of beats. It was crazy. So, yeah, let's get this repaired. We don't want to lose the Seamoth. I mean, especially the... It's our Puddle Jumper. We, we can't lose the Puddle Jumper. A way that you can tell time of where I am, or not exactly where I am, but uh, how much time I've cut out, is pay attention to the battery. We are now at 66%. Uh, and this is another intervention. This is where I'm going to be. And he just kind of annoyed me. It's like, okay, you are not my friend right now. And I think I killed this one. Which is really surprising to me. But I don't know if that was the wisest thing to do. Because watch what happens in the next, like, 30 seconds to a minute. Like, as I get back to the puddle jumper, I hear several warpers... Uh, Wraiths? Warpers. Warp in, and I think they were getting ready to gang up on me. And it was really surprising. Like, one of them even, there's the image of, uh, like, these guys showing up. There's, it it kind of caught me off guard just how many show, showed up. And this is where I realized, hey, we found my favorite entrance to the Lost River. So, luckily I have a beacon with me, and once I... Let's make sure that we're not going to get any warpers right next to us. I called them wraiths earlier. I, I drew a blank and I couldn't figure out what they were called. They're, they're, they're warpers. Um, let's put our beacon right about here, and let's proudly name this thing. Let's see here. Set that, and then we can just push that into the water. And then we try to rename it. And, uh, I mean water and then we try to name it and let's proudly name this the lost river entrance so the lost river i'm just i'm gonna cut out most of it this episode because there is way better footage uh that i can take later on my only reason for sneaking into the lost river is this we need some nickel if we can find three nickel which I do. Um, we can upgrade the depth module in the Nautilus so that we can go to 1300 meters. Which would be helpful for us to be able to find kyanite, which is one of the required re uh, elements in the depth module Mark III and the uh, heat, sorry, thermal reactor. I have to call it a thermal reactor. I kept calling it a thermal generator, but it's a thermal reactor. In addition, I also found sulfur. Sulfur we will need to use for a few things, and I don't remember the wet recipes using it yet, but, you know, here we go. Find another nickel, and our final one. Okay, now, I, I kept a little bit of this in here because just the sheer size of this cave is awesome. Like, the fact that we can see the top and the bottom, and it just feels large, is really cool. Now, back at the entrance, um, we actually had a visitor. Yeah, another crab squid. Yeah, let's, uh, let's dispatch this one. That was the name I was looking for. Crab squids before. I couldn't believe it. Oh, geez. Called it a scrape. Uh, whatever. I don't remember what I called it. Let's dispatch this one. The less of these that are in the bed. Creepy. Ugh. I mean, granted, when he's being held still, he's not that bad. And when he's dead, it's so much better. Yeah, I like it when he's not around at all. Okay, moving on. And don't worry, I will show you where the entrance that I just put the beacon on is next episode. So, here we are. Oh, we found another data box. Hey. The fire suppression system. This would be an awesome module if you are still learning how to... Ooh, torpedo on. Uh, this is an awesome module that you would be able to use if you get attacked a lot. 
Now, the wreck that we are at right now is found in this area of the map, which is a small sliver of blood kelp zone, not quite as big as the large one in the north, but you know, it's it's a decently uh, found section. Okay, not bad. Um, but you can see the blood kelp nearby. Oh shoot, we got warped. Oh, I hate these warpers. Eh. Not to mention. If you saw the message from the computer, or, or our little computer lady, uh, she said we were in the dead zone. Yeah, that's what happens when you go into the dead zone. I was trying to find our third wreck, um, and I kind of went off. <laughs> Here's our third wreck. Uh, I kind of went off the edge of the map, and the map holds you inside the map very cunningly. There are no walls. <laughs> Just everything that will eat you. There are the large, massive ghost leviathans, not just the juvenile ghost leviathan, like the one that we almost got eaten by earlier in the episode. So yeah, you know, I'm taking advantage of that uh, fun little cargo pod that I added to the Seamoth the other day. Not the other day, yeah, last week. Yeah, we got that last week. So this is the repulsor arm from the Seamoth, uh, for the, not the Seamoth. Uh, this is a repulsor arm for the uh, prawn suit, which is, again, another one of those things where we have too much tech for the ability to actually fill the slots. But you can see very quickly that this particular wreck has all the pieces you need, and there are a lot of this repulsor arm, I swear. There's like 30 in this one wreck. So he, this is where this wreck is found on the map right now, and it is just a little bit south and technically west of the floating island. The, I mean, south of our previous wreck, but west of the floating island. And it's not a bad uh, set of technology that you can find. The repulsor arm, it has its place. I mean, I think you, I've never used the prawn suit repulsor arm. So I don't know. Uh, but it, it, it oh, check it out. What do we got? And tech we already had. Okay. Which just adds to the growing annoyance of finding tech that you already have. Especially since we have no true indicator as to what is in a data box before we open it. So we end up picking up titanium when we don't have a lot of uh, area to put. <laughs> we don't have a lot of space. But moving on, what is fascinating. Oh, there's even this particular wreck is on the edge of the Sea Treader's Path, and it actually has two little pieces. It's kind of interesting. Uh, but one of the weird things that kind of started to bug me is I love to make sure that I at least have the large battery charger for emergencies, but I, I guess I was desperate for the large battery charger before I knew the total value of the thermal reactor module. So it, it's kind of one of those things where you got to weigh it however you want. Uh, looks like we need to sacrifice one of our batteries. The repulsor cannon is not exactly useful for this game, or the, for today's game level. Level? No. Uh, today's recording. Um, but find it not, I, I, I find it odd that I'm not... Ooh, look at that. Is it? Just more tech than we have. Okay. Um, we... I just find it fascinating that I cannot find those large battery chargers. I don't understand. Anyway, that aside, let's continue our search for the next wreck, which will be just east of where we're at. Now, I'm not going to lie. It is kind of hard to tell where I am sometimes. I think that right now I'm in what's called the Sparse Reef, but it's possible that I'm on the very edge of the Sea Treader Path. This particular wreck is one that I'm not entirely sure, but just south of where we're at, we find this wreck. This is our last wreck of the visit today. And look, oh, we found a data box already. Let's see what we got. <gasps> it's the thermal reactor module hole. <gasps> Guys, Welcome we found it. Captain. This is a mission success. Oh man. Oh, this is awesome. So. But just before we go in and check out this wreck, uh, we are now at 
in the southern areas of the Grand Reef. And you can see that we have a few like memorabilia, like the cap, and a couple of PDAs. It didn't really feel like the data was all that interesting. And this is one where we only have one room immediately available to us. And there was some prawn suit arms that we already have. Uh, they were, it looked like both of them were the uh, mining arm, which we already completed, right? But this is a bigger piece of uh, a ship, right? And this was why, what I was trying to explain earlier. There are sometimes multiple entrances with no connection in between. So here we open up this and we find a different room. Unfortunately... Another one with more mining type. Uh, oh man, and the weld door. Okay. But that aside, it, you can see that there are different areas in which you might actually have entered a wreck at one point in time, but you didn't notice another door until you approach it from a different angle. This is why it might be beneficial sometimes to go check out all the angles that you can see of a wreck and you might be surprised with what you find. Or you'll find a double door that you have to cut and you'll hate life because it takes like 30 seconds, I swear, to cut these doors. Holy cow, I mean, come on. Let's just speed this part up. There we go, we cut through. And there's a whole lot of... Uh... Yeah, okay. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes when you have to cut through multiple bulkheads and you find nothing except for another bulkhead. <sighs> Let's cut through this one really fast. Do, 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 do. Cutting, cutting, cutting. Okay. Now, finding a whole lot of nothing. I mean, if you need food, or if you're playing in survival where you, you're depending on food, this is nice to find food. But it's kind of frustrating when you don't need it and you just end up... Uh, finding a whole bunch of nothing. And what we just saw there was a dead end in one of the um, ventilation shafts. And dead ends, if you're not prepared for it and you're running out of air, that could be pretty dangerous and cause a respawn, right? <laughs> Something to think about. Okay, now let's go back to the base. So as we had collected the nickel, the we are going to... We're going to uh, upgrade the depth module to the Nautilus. Oh, check it out. Okay. Um, I don't know how to interpret that. We will assume that that was a signal between two of the warpers, or all of the warpers, saying, hey, uh, this guy is hostile. So let's uh, let look at the recipe here. We need some pay steel, and it happened to be that I actually had two lithium left. And I was able to, let's see, what, uh, I don't know why I'm looking into that area. We need to run over to the Nautilus and we need to grab the module so that we can upgrade it. There we go. Let's see, module's over here. Grab the module. And this is where I act too fast. And click. Ah. So, yeah. I just burnt up that paystale on a second Mark 1 module. Just so that I didn't rage quit, I hit save right there. That's why I saved. That was essentially a rage save because I am going to own up to my <laughs> problems. So, after some <laughs> grabbing some stuff, here's the interesting situation I put myself in. I have no more lithium. So, and one of the things that's interesting as well is we're trying to recharge the Seamoth, and I activate the uh, scanner room. And I want you to pay attention to how fast the power is going down right now because it is nighttime and there's not enough power. So 
before I can find this lithium, we run out of power, and this is kind of cool. So let's jump to me coming back, and you can see, coming back, there's no power. I can't even dock the Seamoth. I'm sure if the Seamoth was in the uh, moon pool that we would find that the Seamoth wouldn't be able to be released. So it's kind of cool, kind of creepy at the same time to see this whole facility hall shut down and dark. But uh, we can't let this bother us too much. We should... Ah, oh, come on. I want to get that pay steel. Let me get this. Let me get this. Uh, let's see. We need more titanium, right? Yeah, we're going to need 10 titanium to make the titanium ingots. And then, you know what? <laughs> I just got an idea. We should go over to the life pod because the life pod probably still has more. It has power. And we should be successful at... Uh, getting our pay steel so we can upgrade the module. Let's do that. And you know what's really funny is I wouldn't have even, if I had made sure to empty my inventory before I went to get the uh, module, to upgrade the module, I probably would have been better off if I had emptied the, in the inventory because I had rubies in my inventory and that's what allowed us to even get the, re the second first module. Yeah. Such a bad experience right there. Okay. There's our titanium ingots. There's our pay steel. Or play steel. I don't even... I, I, I gotta pay attention to the spelling of it. For some odd reason, in my mind right now, it is just pay steel. But it's play steel, not bad. P -L -L steel? Something? I don't know. But going back, it was kind of cool because just as we were getting back to the hab. This is why I left this in full. The sun came up, and the habitat, you'll see the message right now, the habitat power was restored. Which, I mean, that's kind of cool. Power restored. So, All primary systems online. we can dock again. We'll Welcome dock the Seamoth so that we get it charging. And this is a, something to remember. If your Seamoth is hurting for power, don't dock it with the Nautilus. Or your Cyclops, uh, you will drain your batteries to recharge the Seamoth. Oops, too far away. Okay. Yes! Now we have the Mark II. Which means, with the Mark II depth module, we have a depth of 1,300 meters that we can take the Nautilus. Which means we can go deeper than the, sea, the, the, the Puddle Jumper. But really, that's all we got. Like, that was the main goal for today, was to make the Nautilus more valuable. You know what, next time? We're gonna build a base. We're gonna go deep, guys. We're going. We're going down to the Lost River. Make sure you hit that like. We'll see you next time. Bye bye